Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, host of The Valder Beebe Show, a new kind of spiritual talk show. Broadcast on FM radio, internet websites, and print publications. I am well known for that celebrity interview. Interviews that we conduct in studio, by telephone, and by satellite with today's most fascinating people. I'm Valder Beebe, and I'll see you on ValderBeebeShow.com. Good morning, Dr. Lori Mosca. Thank you for joining me today on the Valder Beebe Show. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Well, I would love the subject that we get a chance to talk about, preventing the second heart attack, what cardiac patients need to know about heart disease, stroke, and the nation's number one killer. Go ahead. I'm doing a health fair this, this weekend. I'm sure this is critical for people coming to the health fair. And my listening audience. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right, uh, Valder. You know, we have 26 million Americans that are at risk for a second heart attack. So this is a major public health issue. And I think it's really important for um, patients to understand that we have great evidence-based recommendations and national guidelines on what to do to prevent a heart attack. You know, and obviously we don't have time to go over every single thing, but, you know, at the top of that list is always lifestyle. Uh, you know, maintaining a healthy diet, physical activity, not smoking, healthy body weight. Uh, those are a given. But what's really been at the top of our list for a long, long time in terms of medica medical approaches uh, to the prevention of heart disease is really aspirin therapy, right? It goes way, way back. Uh, and we have an enormous evidence base showing how beneficial aspirin is to protecting the heart from recurrent problems. But the challenge that we face is that, you know, one in four patients who it's recommended for aren't really taking it as, as we recommend it uh, for a variety of reasons, but most commonly because of side effects, especially stomach problems. That's interesting, but I gotta go back a little bit. You said two things, lifestyle and exercise. Mm -hmm. And what I have found, and you know I'm not a doctor, I'm a radio host, but people figure if they go to work and they walk, that they've had exercise for today. This is what they're telling me. Well, that's okay. Yeah, it is. And walking is a great form of exercise. No, I'm talking about just going to work. They say, oh, you know, I move at work. But they're not moving beyond work. They're not adding uh, anything beyond that. So they feel like, hey, I'm in great shape because I'm walking, you know, just moving at work. And I think when you say lifestyle, you're talking about some significant things. Am I correct? Yes. No, I think you're right. Um, we need to really um, look at the total amount of activity, not just at play, not just at work, but really are we getting enough activity in, in general? Um, and so there's good guidelines about that. You know, we want our, um, our folks exercising at least, you know, three, three to five times a week beyond what they're doing uh, at their day job. So that's important. Uh, you know, and that's not new news to everybody. I think um, what's, what's hard for people is, you know, why are we, why are we non-adherent? You know, are we, are we denying that this could happen to us, that we could have a recurrent problem or have an initial problem? And so I, I've been really interested in, you know, why, why patients, and I've dealt with this for 20, 30 years, are, are really not adherent to things that we know actually benefit the heart. The heart is so important to us. Why do we have such a high num incidence or numbers for heart disease? Well, like we were just um, discussing, I think that lifestyle definitely plays into it. Um, we have, unfortunately, an epidemic of diabetes, obesity, uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol problems. You know, and, and really all of these patients, uh, our individuals are at risk of having an initial heart attack or for many patients, recurrent heart problems. 
Okay, and I'm not going to forget what you said about the aspirin. How can people overcome that challenge if that's a simple prescription? It does cause a little side effect. How can they overcome that challenge, doctor? Well, the good news is, um, Valder, that we do have a new uh, FDA-approved medication available now. Um, which is, is really, I think, a game changer in the field of preventive cardiology because it allows us uh, in a single pill combination treatment uh, to help patients with an enteric coated aspirin form uh, combined with uh, an agent that protects the stomach lining that's released immediately. So by the time the aspirin is released a little bit later, that the stomach is protected has been proven to reduce the side effects, the GI side effects, but it, and as important, has also been shown to increase adherence to taking the aspirin on a regular basis. And that's critical, Valder, because we know that patients who don't take their aspirin, as we recommend, that their risk for recurrent heart problem is increased 300%, so it's pretty dramatic. It is. Where can my audience go online, doctor, and find more information as we wrap up? Uh, sure. Uh, for general information about heart disease, heart disease prevention, the American Heart Association website is a great resource. And for more product-specific information about agents that can protect the heart uh, and the stomach uh, combined uh, in, in a single pill, that would be aralez.com, A-R-A-L-E-Z.com. Dr. Lori, thank you for this important life-changing information. You guys got to change your lifestyles and follow the doctor's orders. Thank you, doctor. Thank you.